the stigma to me is that um, everyone thinks that, you know, polyamory, that we're having like these wild orgies and unprotected I'm sex and, an and that, you know, and this and that. Or and, a you know. club. I'm Avery Bright. I am Tony's long distance partner. I'm Maria. I'm Simone's new partner. My partners come, if they come from out of town, they stay here. If his mm -hmm. does, mm -hmm. they stay here too. And we mm -hmm. will all do something together and our they do something together. Yeah, it's separate. like having a family member you coming know? in from out of town and you know. It, it, I wish I wish it was more exciting, you know. Yeah, I wish. So yeah. <laughs> I'm going out. All right, baby. I'm coming. Come on, hurry up. Simone and Tony Frederick are heading to a dinner date. I only made it to Jasmine. He's never been to this restaurant before, but she has with another man, someone she's dating. <laughs> so let's back up. She's my it's rock. My yeah, I mean, the Fredericks have been married for eight years. She makes it all, all possible. Four years into the marriage, Simone suggested they open up their relationship. At the time, she was watching a show about a couple who did it. And I'm like, oh, we can make this work. <laughs> I didn't care for the show too much. <laughs> it was nothing for me to wake up the next morning and, and she, this whole Facebook post on how much she loves this, her <laughs> other partner. And I'm like, oh, just, you know, you know, I need a drink. Now they're part of a growing number of Americans that identify as polyamorous, people who love more than one. Here we go. My girlfriend in Atlanta has been like, blowing my phone up. It's just been so busy. He's about to catch a flight to Atlanta with a partner to go see another partner. It's always interesting when you have a, a partner traveling with you out of town to a city where you have a partner there. I don't know if I'm ready for both of you guys to be in the same car together. <laughs> Put my hat in here. The plan was to pick up Simone at work. They would say their goodbyes and then he would head to the airport. But Simone uh, couldn't get off work okay. on time. And of course, Simone just texts me. And she said, oh, sorry, I'm coming, oh my gosh. Oh, it's too late, yeah. We didn't get to say goodbye. I thought I'd see him again, so then it was like, we didn't do the special goodbye. I did feel a little bit lonely yesterday. I didn't miss him, but you know, I do my meditation, I do my yoga. That helps me to move my emotions through and like let them out. I used to be a lot worse. <laughs> there were times when he'd go visit a partner and, um, and I'd stay home and I'd feel so sad and I'd cry and cry <laughs> because I thought that when he got back that he wouldn't love me anymore. This time there were some tears too. They had a talk when Tony got back from Atlanta. What about me? Like, you know, you just spend all this time with your partners. I'm, what am I, a chopped liver? You know, so I started feeling, you know, really, I was, I was upset and I was hurt about it because you're thinking something negative about yourself. Like, oh, well, he doesn't love me as much as he loves her, or I'm nothing now. I'm just over here, like a piece of furniture or something. I finally shared that with him and I was vulnerable with him and I didn't blame him. I just told him how I felt. Tony says he understands what she was feeling because he's been there. They were walking in front of us, uh, her partner and Simone and her partner, and, and she reached out and grabbed his hand to hold his hand. And I swear the ground disappeared from underneath me. <laughs> and I was in a free fall. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was so triggered. It's so different now compared to back then. I probably smile today, you know, I'd be smiling like, oh, that's so cute. I like seeing her happy. And, and, and sometimes happiness don't necessarily always be, have to be with me. I thought he was cute, attractive, smart. And for Simone, sometimes that joy comes from meeting someone new. I didn't think he'd be into me, really. <laughs> Hi, how's it How going? doing? Good, good. Well, you look amazing. Well, thank you. So do you. What is in it for you? Um, love, sex, connection, uh, excitement, variety, and more love. Janet Hardy is one of the authors of The Ethical Slut, a practical guide to polyamory, open relationships, and other adventures. Back when we first started talking on uh, the topic of polyamory, back in 1996-97, when we were writing the first edition, most of our audiences were people pretty much like us, um, aging hippies, uh, Renfair types, uh, you know, the, the kinds of people who are often on the leading edge of social change. So are you new to Polly? Yeah. These days when I go to speak, uh, the audience is much different, much 
younger and shinier and fitting in better into the into the mainstream world than we did back in the beginning. And it's more common than you might think. In a 2014 poll, 4 to 5% of Americans reported being polyamorous. Compare that to the 4.1% of Americans that reported being LGBT in 2016. And younger people seem to be gravitating more towards non-monogamy. A 2016 poll showed that only about half of people under 30 reported that their ideal relationship would be completely monogamous. Uh, I have friends that are women that are really, really amazing people, and I love to have conversations with them. I love hanging out with them. Um, but monogamy kind of stifles you from having those relationships. It's going to be times of polyamory that it might not feel like a win. <laughs> One Thursday a month, Simone and Tony get together with other people who are practicing polyamory. What poly allows me to do is to do it over openly, authentically, and ethically. So I don't have to cheat. With some who are curious about it, or sometimes others who want to challenge the idea. My preference leans towards monogamy. What I would prefer for myself is that they just focus their sexuality and their romance and their seduction on me, so I can reciprocate that. You know, when you love someone, you, you something you set free. free. I'm not trying to be cliche. <laughs> I know, it's so cliche. <laughs> People that are polyamorous, they do get jealous. We naturally don't like to feel un uncomfortable or pain. Yeah, it's a human nature. Um, our human nature is pain, to, is to, to pain. stop pain in any form or, sh or fashion. And that, I and that feel means, it. People have to understand that it's all rooted in love. Love for each other and love for all the partners, um, our, which we look at as our extended family. When people ask me, you know, what do you get uh, out of polyamory? I say, you know, love and abundance. <laughs>